all around the world, there are buildings and structures in desperate need of demolition. The bridge was designed in the 30s, so the bridge has served its useful life. I'm Brendan Moore, self-confessed demolition junkie. In this series, I scour the globe in hunt of the biggest, oh! most dangerous. There really aren't too many safe ways of doing it. <laughs> and most spectacular demolitions I can find. My mission? To reveal the inner workings behind the art of demolition. To meet the experts. Taking a building down at that height has to be done carefully. And the machinery capable of leveling anything in their way. A lot of science that goes into it. It's not just like the match and uh, whole years and wait for the boom. All sorts of buildings are demolished every day of the week right across the world. And in each case, the structure will vary, which means that the demolition crew will have to come up with a unique strategy for every single job. The more unusual the structure, the more brilliant the plan, especially if it involves explosives. And that's precisely what we found in Namur in Belgium. At first glance, this area doesn't look like it's home to any abnormal buildings. But just beyond these residential streets stands a ginormous 170-metre-high telecoms tower. For 30 years, this colossal column has been a blot on the local landscape. But thankfully, it's not going to live to see its 31st birthday. Until recently, the tower was used by national telecommunications company Proximus. It helped them transmit data across Europe using microwave technology via a huge network of similar cloud busters. But advancements in technology mean fibre optic cables now move data much more efficiently. And that's good news for us because towers like this are no longer needed. So we get to blow it up. Haroon Fano works for Proximus, the owners of the tower. It's a very uh, high building in the centre of nowhere. We don't need any more this kind of technology. Maintenance of this kind of building is very, very, very expensive. And therefore, uh, we put it down. But bringing this monster down isn't going to be as simple as strapping some dynamite to the bottom and hoping for the best. Control is key here, and that's an even greater necessity when within range of the falling tower is a busy highway. Get this one wrong, and it could turn into a major incident and the severe disruption of the local infrastructure. It's going to need a lot of preparation and the skilled hands of some demolition dynamos to get this one right. And for this job, that task falls to the Wanty group and their man on the ground, Christophe Lamatra. The difference in this project, it's the form of the building. It's a high tower, only tower in Belgium, perhaps in Europe and perhaps in the world, like this. Rather than blow the whole structure up from top to bottom, potentially scattering debris for miles around, the plan for this job is to destroy the base and watch the tower fall to the ground like a giant concrete tree. There is a three-stage strategy in place and it'll require a combination of mechanical and explosive force. Stage one, the defunct data center at the base of the tower will need to be destroyed first. The team will have to be extremely careful doing this. If they damage any of the tower's three supporting legs in the process, the tower could come crashing down without any control. That could spell disaster. Stage two. With the three legs now exposed, it's time to plant the explosives. A tower this big can't be allowed to just fall in any direction. So the placement of the charges is critical to controlling the collapse. With the local highway so close, any mistakes could be catastrophic. Stage three, boom time. This is where we find out if all of the hard work has paid off. If things go to plan, it will topple in the least destructive or dangerous direction possible. If it doesn't, they'll be left with a major incident on their hands. To add to the pressure, the tower is no longer as stable as it once was. So it's not the safest environment to be working in even before we bring dynamite into the equation. The tower is unstable, the concrete is wrong. Water getting into cracks in the concrete freezes and expands during the winter months, making the cracks bigger and in time, potentially forcing the tower to start falling apart 
of its own accord. The tower is unsafe for the people who are walking around the tower and the people who is riding on uh, the highway just around the tower. Before stage one of the plan can swing into action, the team are going to have to deal with an issue that could potentially stop this demolition in its tracks. Another tower nearby is emitting electromagnetic waves. Those waves could block the signals sent from the remote control to the detonators that will set off the explosives once they've been placed on the tower. The explosives expert on this job, Etienne Le Shirlier, is well aware of the possible ramifications. We must be certain that we don't have any uh, electromagnetic uh, interference with our detonators. If we have interference, the detonators will never blow out. <laughs> and it's quite a problem uh, when the job to perform is to blast. <laughs> In order to find out if the electromagnetic waves are going to make life difficult for Etienne, he's going to attempt a test explosion using the remote control. Today we have test of a system of detonators in real condition. We have placed the detonators at the highest place where we are going to, to blast, 100 meter high. We have placed all detonators in sands in order to definitely avoid any uh, projection of uh, pieces of metal. To really test the real conditions of execution of the job, we start those detonators from the, the same place where we are going to be the day of the demolitions. Etienne sets up the remote and arms the detonators. If the signal is interrupted, then the charges won't explode and this job might be put on hold indefinitely. One, two, three. One second between two detonators. Not the biggest bang Etienne's ever had, but it still put a smile on his face. It's the green light they wanted that allows them to push forward with their plan. Everything worked perfectly fine. We can be confident in what will happen the, the D-Day. Bringing down a complex structure like this one, though, isn't going to be easy. And before anyone can crack open the dynamite, there's a lot of very careful groundwork that needs to go into preparing the tower. And if this isn't done properly, setting off those explosives could see Belgium launch its first rocket into space. After the successful detonator test, we're ready to take the first step towards bringing down the tower. It's time to demolish the old data centre building at its base. With a complex internal structure, this won't be as straightforward as knocking down a few walls. We have to cut the fixation in the concrete, in steel, in order to make a separation between the, the tower and the building. Amongst other things, the tower also has an elevator that will need to be dismantled and removed. With the elevator halfway up the shaft and the power supply to the tower cut off, the only way to bring it down is to snip the cable and let gravity do the rest. Look out below. With the work on the inside completed, time to bring the machines in to finish this stage of the job. Introducing Big Blue, an excavator with a penchant for glass.
With the glass removed, it gives the team the first clear sight of the tower's three legs. This part of the job will require great skill and a steady hand. If any of the legs are damaged at this stage, the tower could become dangerously unstable. With a busy highway within touching distance, mistakes now could be disastrous. We have to be careful with the machine. The concrete is very hard. Serious power is required to crunch through so much concrete. But this is where the specialist machinery comes into its own. To bring the data center building down in and around the legs, all of the interior concrete floors and walls need to be carefully knocked out. It may seem like a simple job to the untrained eye, but the team are only ever just one wrong move away from damaging one of the three supporting legs and causing an uncontrolled collapse. It's nerve-wracking times for the boys on the ground. final pillar around the first leg removed, the danger passes. But with two more legs still to free, they're only a third of the way there. But some parts of this building aren't going to go quietly. A lot of what's being taken down is directly connected to the legs of the tower. It needs to be skillfully removed to ensure nothing affects the stability of the structure. We don't want this thing coming down just yet. The last thing we want is huge chunks of concrete swinging freely and potentially damaging the second leg. In the blink of an eye, we're suddenly at the most hair-raising moment of the job so far. They need to disconnect this from the building as quickly as they can before they find themselves in a critical situation. That was close. But in the end, Big Blue manages to bring down that large section without causing any damage to the second leg. With the lion's share of the building now removed, clearing what remains around leg number three is a much simpler task. Phase one, complete. I am happy uh, with the progress of the work. It's a good job. No demolition ever goes precisely as planned, and with a highly unusual structure like this one, it makes the likelihood of a smooth path to implosion even less likely. But as ever, it is down to the ingenuity of the experts on the ground to find solutions to any hurdles placed in their path. With stage one complete, stage two on the horizon, and with the dynamite arriving tomorrow, our explosives expert, Etienne, has some time to survey the site. He needs to finalise his plan to ensure he controls the direction in which the tower will fall. Our goal is to move away from the motorway that is that direction. We want to go in that direction, in that countryside, because there is nothing uh, risky in that direction. The team will insert explosives into the leg that points in the direction in which they need the tower to fall, away from the local highway. Completely destroying this leg first will force the tower to begin toppling along the correct trajectory. Milliseconds later, explosives will go off on both of the other two legs simultaneously. These legs will only have dynamite inserted into one side, the side that faces the first leg and the direction in which the tower is being manipulated into falling. The unexploded side of those two legs will then act as a hinge, further ensuring the crumbling tower remains on the correct bearing. Once the tower starts to come down at its base, 
More explosives will go off 100 metres up the tower, but this time on the side facing the highway. And that should force the top 70 metres of the tower to fall back on itself, reducing the radius of destruction on the ground and restricting the cleanup site to the smallest possible area. The two parts of the building are going to collapse one above the others. All the volume of material will collapse that direction. The two legs only being partially imploded on one side will have charges inserted directly into their concrete base. However, it's vital that the base of the first leg to be imploded, the one facing the direction the tower must fall, is completely obliterated as quickly as possible. Etienne is using what he hopes is the perfect technique to address this. We are going to, to fill the bottom of the leg with water and place explosive in the middle of the, the leg. And with the, the presence of water in that volume, the concrete will completely be uh, destroyed. Usually, when an explosion occurs outside of water, the air surrounding it is pushed away at great force from the center of the blast. Similarly, an explosion going off underwater will push the surrounding liquid away from it with immense force. The difference between the two is that when moving air strikes an object, the air will compress, reducing the overall impact. However, as water does not easily compress, its impact on a surrounding object during an explosion is much greater. Usually, explosives inserted into a concrete structure like this will be placed all around the perimeter of the object. As Etienne is using water to ensure the maximum ferocity of the blast, he'll be placing the dynamite in the center of the structure, surrounding it with water and letting the force of the liquid blast through the concrete. The team are confident they have the perfect plan. But Etienne's under no illusion that demolition is a wicked mistress, and there's a lot that might go wrong. If the water leaks, the method cannot work. So that's the reason why we need to check the filling of the legs. We can uh, lose a, a kind of accuracy in the direction of collapsing. One leg could be a, a bit weaker than the other, and this could induce a, a slight rotation of the whole building. The question is just where it's going to fall down. With plans in place and the dynamite not arriving until tomorrow, all they can do now is wait and double check they've considered every eventuality. It's an early start for everyone involved as the dynamite rolls on site at 6 a.m. With only four hours to lay the explosives, the men are quickly briefed before cracking on with the job at hand. Speed is of the essence, but complacency is a killer in this game. The team will need to work fast, but use all their experience and professionalism to make sure they match efficiency with safety. There is no job involving an implosion that isn't hazardous. And though there are strict rules to abide by when handling explosives, the risk of an accident is extremely high. And it is not the sort of accident that you can walk away from. If things aren't done right, mistakes can become lethal. With the explosives already positioned underwater inside the first leg, the charges are being inserted into the other two legs. We have four hours. We have about 200 holes to load. We have about 100 holes on the top at 100 meter. 60 holes in the legs A and B. With the scheduled implosion time drawing ever closer, no risks are being taken with the safety of people in the vicinity. 
roads are closed, an exclusion zone set up, and a helicopter flies above with a heat sensing infrared camera to ensure nobody is anywhere near the site. Etienne has one final opportunity to check everything before he too has to clear the area and he makes sure all the dynamite holes are secure. A crowd of locals gather. There's much anticipation surrounding this implosion and Christoph and the team will be praying they can deliver as expected. This is a huge moment for Etienne. Will all of his planning pay off? Will the tower fall in the right direction? Three, two, one. such a huge tower reduced to rubble in a matter of seconds is not only extremely satisfying, but such an impressive feat by Etienne and the team. The tower fell in precisely the direction they wanted. The explosives went off at just the right time and the top half of the structure fell back on itself as planned. The highway is reopened with very little disruption and this tower is consigned to history. I am happy. It's a good job. Just a little bit crying to see uh, the, the tower on the ground. went not so bad in terms of direction and in terms of blasting everything worked very fine the result is very good now i'm feeling relaxed and now i'm going to celebrate it yes drink some some beer Sensational. Another beautifully executed implosion by a highly skilled and professional team. The dramatic final few seconds of this demolition are what will grab the headlines, but whilst I love a good implosion just as much as the next man, I can't help but feel the most impressive part of this job is all the work it took to get there. See you next time. <laughs>